everyone. Happy Monday. Um, I am hoping that this video can be used for months to come, so I'm not going to go into too many details on what's going on with our team now, but I am hosting a business activity tracker challenge starting today where we're going to be keeping each other accountable to these business activity trackers. So I want to explain to you why it's so important to use it and how to use it so that you guys can basically grow your business because I think this is an extremely powerful tool. I have noticed that all of my coaches who use it or do, are doing the activities on here consistently have way more success, hit success club, have more customers, have more rake advancements, make more money, help more people. So I also find that for myself, it helps me get feel a sense of control over my business. And I think that the number one thing that causes people to feel overwhelmed and to feel out of, you know, feel like they're don't know what they need to do to be successful is not having any system. So this is a system. The six it's called the success club system. Gets you to success club. And the first thing I want to say is that when you first look at this sheet, you might be like, oh my gosh, it's a lot. But remember, you do your best each day. And you think also think critically through your business and what time of month it is and say, what do I need to be focusing on today? Because maybe this week, if you have a group starting on October 21st, that's in one week from today, this week is where you're going to be focusing on those invites and the follow-ups. And although I do want you to be doing each of the items on here consistently, you need to think, okay, today, this week is the week where I'm going to be, you know, inviting and doing those follow-ups more so than adding new followers and et cetera. Maybe next week after your group starts, you're like, okay, decompress, time to start and adding some new connections, getting some new followers, doing more starting of conversations, starting to get to know my followers, and re-engaging with friends and family, um, and then so forth. So you wanna be consistently doing the activities on here, but there is gonna be a season for that. And that's why it is also important to be mapping out when your challenge group is, backing out two to three weeks and saying, two weeks before the challenge group at a minimum is when you're gonna be starting to be inviting and thinking and doing more social media posts for that challenge group. You're gonna be wanting to do those things month round, but you're gonna be really kind of like zoning in. Like you should feel like the couple, two weeks before your challenge group, like you, you should be like, am I posting too much about the challenge group? But you're not because people need to hear and see think, see your announcement about the challenge group and inviting them publicly to the challenge group multiple times because A, they might never even see it. I can't tell you how many like returning challengers I'll have come back to me and say, when's your next group? Even though I literally just did a social media post two hours ago that maybe they even liked that they don't even realize that it's October 21st. So do not ever feel like you are, I mean, you want to be adding your life into your social media posts. That's not just all invites, but I see that most coaches tend to go on the side of not inviting enough to the challenge group on their social media and that people don't even realize that you're hosting a group and go more into that. That's another topic, but I want to talk about the success club system, business activity tracker. So I will put, so if you're watching the replay of this, I will put uh, the link to it in the comments, but you should know where it is if you're brand new, um, there's also a link in the help one group. But the number one thing, these four categories are called the vital behaviors. So the number one thing is be the proofs the products work. So I want you to work out and do your Shakeology every day and check it off. Feel great about the fact that you did that. And there's going to be days, you guys, on especially like Saturday or Sunday, maybe that's all you do besides like that and a couple stories. Um, and that's okay. But on the days that you've decided you're dedicating to work, and that's going to depend on how, what your goals are for this business and how much time you have. So maybe you only have three days a week to sit down and really dive into this, but put them on the calendar and do it. And it's okay if it's not, you're not checking everything off every day. I don't check everything off every day, but I do look at this and I think, where am, are the holes? Where do I need to be focusing my time on? Where am I not growing? What am I, you know, what, it's kind of a great tool to look back and reflect and say, what, what's going on? Um, I want to briefly state that at the top, it's asked you to write your why. And I really want you to do that. Write down your why and your target market. Know who you're talking to. Okay. So the second is connect and invite and follow up. And this, like I said, it has a block of time here, suggested time of an hour and 40 minutes. So if you have two hours to work your business every day, I want you to be spending an hour and 40 minutes on this section. But if you only have 30 minutes to work your business, maybe you do five minutes per section. 
and you set a timer and you say, I'm going to see how many connections I can add in five minutes. Or you say, I have a challenge group coming up. I'm going to invite for 30 minutes, set a timer. That's okay. So the first is an initiate connections and add followers. So the way that I suggest doing this is go to an account that you follow and ideally follows you back that has a decent amount of followers. If they don't follow you back, that's okay. That this is going to be someone similar to you. So on my niche is twin moms and runners. So I'm going to go to a twin mom or a runner, ideally a mom who's a runner. So mother runners, actually my niche more than runners, mother runners and twin moms. So I'm going to go to one of their accounts. Ideally, I'm going to go to an account similar to my last social media post. So say I just did a post on twins or momming, mom life. I'm going to go to a twin mom account. Then I'm going to go to their most recent photo and I'm going to see who liked it. And then I'm going to just click on the likes and I'm going to see this list of people who liked it. And then I'm going to go and depends on, there's a couple strategies. You can either just follow all these people or you can go to each account that liked this other person's photo and you can go to their account, follow them, and then maybe leave an engaging comment, like a, like go to their page and give them some, show them that you're there. You follow, like a few of their photos, comment move on to the next person in the list. Do the same, do the same. You can test out different ways. You could just follow them and then later unfollow if they don't follow you back. You can just follow them. Um, but the point is you are finding someone similar to you and looking at who interacts with their account because they're more likely to interact with your account if they're an active person who's liking photos and commenting and then follow and like those people. So that prompts them to go back to your profile, say, do I wanna follow this person? And that's why it's very important to have your, um, your Instagram profile set to like ex show who you are. So mine says twin mom and runner. So if I like a twin mom's photo, she goes back and says, oh, she's a twin mom too. So I'm going to like her photos. You can also do this with accounts. Like I, there's like a account called Twiniversary, Twiniversity. So like an account, like you could, or you could save your like really into like cloth diapering. You could go to a cloth diaper like this, like maybe more of a niche cloth diaper account, go to who's following them, who's liking their photos and then follow in like their stuff. And that's going to prompt them to go back. I want to warn you, especially if you're brand new, this is going to take time. And this is going to be something that is going to pay you pay dividends down the road in months and months to come. So in your early days, you really, I want you to be focusing on the people who already know you, the relationship you've already built, your friends, your family, um, and spend, set a timer and maybe do 10 minutes a day of this five days a week. It's not even an hour a week and just do it. And it's going to add up in the long run, but don't get so caught up in who's following back and get down on yourself or note like if, if a lot of beach body coaches are following you. Um, that's because you're posting about fitness and Instagram things. She's posting about fitness. So I'm going to connect her with people that are like her. So that's why it's important to have your niche where you're thinking of like other things about you and then talking about those things and then using hashtags similar to those things. So like your dog mom, um, using the dog mom hashtag so you can attract other dog moms, not necessarily other fitness people who are going to be a lot. A lot of them are going to be beach body coaches. There's not that many beach body coaches out there. It's going to maybe seem like it in the beginning, but there's not. Um, just remember that you are most likely one of the only people in most people's newsfeed who is excited, like positive being, super into fitness and being inspirational. Not everyone has that like a news feed like yours. So don't get discouraged and think that there's just too much competition. There's not, there's so many people you can help. So the next one is do a social media post that help showcases the benefits of your healthy lifestyle or has a call to action. This I just mean, just means do a social media post. So ideally you want to do at least three social media posts on your main feed per week, three to five I would is my recommendation. I don't post every day but I do recommend that you consistently post. So three to five times a week. And those are going to be a mix of your lifestyle, your niche, like I said, so for me running or twin mom stuff and um, not all fitness and not all action, like called invites every single time, but just kind of a mix. And these things are going to get easier as you go, but I'm just going through the list so that you can see what I'm doing. So then it's updating your Instagram and Facebook story throughout the day. I'm not going to dig too much into this, but you also like these, this is suggestion, the checks, of what you should be doing and just make sure that you're doing an item from each of these lists throughout the week. It doesn't have to be every single day. So the next one is respond to new likes, comments, and views. Again, this says 25 minutes as long as you just set a timer. And this just means going to seeing who's watching your stories,
going to your last post and who liked it. And this is just means not responding. This just means going to interact with that person and saying, I see that you are following me and I'm going to show you that I want to build a relationship with you too. So this is like, if you want to go to the bottom, like you go to the very bottom of who's viewing your stories. Those are people that don't interact with you as much. So those are great people. Um, not if, if they're not, if they're private, um, I will sometimes send those people an invitation to join my group if they're consistently watching my thing, but I'm, I'd recommend just going to public accounts and then just going to their account, liking their most recent photo, commenting on what genuinely commenting on their photo, maybe responding to a story and starting a conversation, not about fitness. Um, this is the respond to likes, comments, and views is really just about the relationship building with the existing people that are already your fans. And if you're a brand new coach, I highly recommend going to your Facebook friend list and or your Instagram, whoever is already following you and starting to start conversations with all of those people. How are you doing? How have you been? Just respond to, if they have a story, just respond to their story. Make it very cat, like very casual, just like you're getting, just re-engage with them. And this isn't like going to the invites right away. Um, so then the next one is invite. It says at least five people to join a challenge group or learn about coaching. So inviting is by far the most, the scariest part. And we actually have a whole team training on this that can walk you through our process, but literally just invite people the way that you want to be invited. And I personally, if someone's been watching my stories about my fitness stuff and I'll do like a series of workout photos and then they watch till the end and they've been following me for a while and I know it, I'm not going to make a ton of small chat, especially if we've already had conversations in the past, we've like, responded to each other's stories. I'm just going to send them an invite and say, Hey, you know, if you saw my next accountability group starts on October 21st, I would love to give you more information if you're interested in joining. If not, no worries, but wanted to invite you. Super simple. So that's just with someone that maybe I don't know that well. But if it's someone that you know pretty well and that you're friends with, you might want to add more pers personal, a more personal touch to that invite. Um, but don't be afraid to invite. And don't like these invites. You have to remember whatever you, whoever you invite today. That's planting a seed. They're most likely not going to say yes right away. They're, they might say, what does that mean? What does an accountability group mean? And then you're going to give them a little bit of information, not a lot. <laughs> if they ask what it means, just give them a blurb and then ask them, what are you doing for workouts now? What are your, like, are you working towards a fitness goal? Um, start getting them to talk about themselves. Don't just blurt out tons of information or like immediately say, I'll send you an email with this long email. No, don't do that right away. You want to just these are all things you're going to learn as you go too. So you might find maybe you've already done that where you were like, I'll just send you and then you just send them the email and you notice that they didn't respond. That's probably because they were like, I don't even know what this is. And now I got this long email with a link to purchase. Um, but you're going to learn that as you go. The thing is you're going to get better at inviting. You're going to get more courageous at inviting. You're going to feel more confident and comfortable in it. The more you coach, the more you do it. So just start, and remember not to, I'm not a proponent of the Hey Girl messaging every single person that I don't know and saying, join my group. I'm more of like, if I notice someone is like watching what I'm doing, send them the invite. It's like, I've heard the analogy that um, say you post on your feed, I'm having a party on Friday night at 5 p.m. Everyone's invited. Your best friends are going to be like, oh, cool. I'll be there at 5 p.m., right? But, and some people might be like, I want to come to your party and send you a message and say, when, like, what are the details of the party? But most people are going to be like, that sounds fun, but I don't know. So if you send them an invite and say, Hey, did you see my post? I'm having a party on Friday night. Do you want to join us? I'd love if you were there. They're going to be like, Oh my God. Yes. I do want to come to your party. Thank you so much for asking. I will be there. And I'm saying this because I've had that exact same thing where I'm like in this mom's text group and they'll be like, play date, whenever. And Sometimes I'm like, I don't know, but if some, one of them had sent me an individual text and said, Hey, I'd really love for you to be at the play date on Thursday. I'd be like, Oh, thanks. I would love to come. Um, and I know there's a, a little bit of a difference there's money exchange and all of that and their goals, but just think of it as that, like how great they would feel to be invited to join you, to do something, something they see that you're passionate about and they want to, maybe they have a little FOMO, but they're, they don't know how to ask. And I've literally had coaches tell me, I never would have become a coach if you didn't ask me to be a coach. So the same goes for coaching invites. If you think someone's rocking it and would be a great coach, just tell them. It would be so awesome. I think you'd be great at it. Most likely they're going to say no, but that doesn't mean they're not coming around later and they're not going to keep watching you and be like, what is this coaching thing? Seriously, you got to move past the fear. You got to say, it. you just got to do it.
And sometimes I find that I just get in the zone and I can do a lot of invites at once. So even though it says five a day, sometimes I'll send 20 or 30 in a day and then other days I'll do zero. So it really just depends. That's why I like the tracker because I write down how many I invite and then it like reminds me, okay, I need to do more invites because I have not been doing it. Um, so the last thing is just to follow up. And by follow up, I mean, these are people that have expressed interest. So anytime someone expressed interest or wants more information, you want to write their name down. You ideally want to get the point of getting their email address so that you have it. And then you're going to be tracking that in some kind of spreadsheet or on paper, I do a spreadsheet. And then these are the people you're going to want to follow up with and say, Hey, just wanted to let you know our group starts next Monday and we're setting up the group on, we're setting up the group. Now I saved you a spot. Would you like to join? And that usually prompts them to respond. If you maybe you're not setting up the group, you can say something else, but you just want to kind of give them a nudge. And I do this within two to three days of them asking for information um, or sending them information. And then I will always invite that person again the next month, even if they never respond to me, which is very common. Um, I will the next month follow up and say, um, I know last month didn't work out the timing, you know, whatever. I, it didn't work out last month. I have another group starting on Monday. Would you like to join? Um, also, they might not respond to that, but I can't tell you how many people uh, this process that I'm explaining to you, I've gone through and then they come back later out of the blue. I'm ready. I'm ready to go. When's your next group? Sign me up. Send me the link. They're just ready. So if I hadn't laid the foundation with all these other things, um, that wouldn't have happened. So I encourage you, I know each of these items, you're like, I don't know exactly what I'm doing, but this is exactly what I have done to build my business into a full-time income and to be where I am now and be on it's, I mean, and beyond. And this is what the coaches on my team that I'm seeing have success are doing. And it's these little tasks and it's just about discipline, setting the working hours aside and saying, I'm going to work on my business. I'm going to get out my tracker and I'm going to work my way down it. And remember we have power hours on 8, 8 PM on Tuesdays Pacific time for the fit and balance tribe and Thursdays at 5 PM. They're just half hour on Thursdays, um, 5 PM Pacific that I host in our smaller group. They're, the event is in this group. So you'll see it, um, in the Facebook event. Um, but we work through this and we just work through it together. And I just encourage you to take ownership and say, like, it feels good to me, even if I don't sell a challenge pack this week, but I filled out my tracker and I'm like, I'm moving my business forward. You have to keep in perspective that everything you do now is going to pay off. And if you do all this action now and you get discouraged because it's not paying off today or next week and you give up, that's just all that work that would have paid off in the future is going to be gone. So don't get discouraged because I've been in your shoes. I know I've had weeks where I'm like, Oh man, or months where I'm like, I just can't get anyone to sign up. I can't help anyone. And then it happens because of the work I'd put in before. And because on those, honestly, on the weeks that it's a little, or the months it's a little harder, I set aside some extra time to work and I, I get more focused. And I found that when I focus in and I do these activities, it truly works. Um, so the last, I mean, the third section is getting people results. So contributing to your challenge group, recognizing achievement. So this can be like shouting at a, um, a customer or a challenger on your, um, on your stories. Like even if you're in a, you're hosting a challenge group with four other people and a coach on your team says a success they had, you can always screenshot that and share it on your stories and say, look what's happening in our challenge group. People are like getting great results because it's true. Um, and the last thing is personal development. And I can't emphasize enough how important this is. And this is something that I personally do while multitasking almost always. So I'm always, I'm doing my makeup and listening to it. I'm cleaning and listening to personal development. I am commuting and listening to personal development. And so my personal recommendation is to listen to the podcast, um, go to the podcast app and go to the team beach body, um, it's called the Team Botch Beach Body Podcast, and every week there'll be a new one from a top coach. And then I also recommend the Women Inspiring Women Podcast by Melanie Mitro. So if you just listen to those two, and Melanie Mitro, I mean both of them, Melanie Mitro in particular is amazing. Her Women Inspiring Women, she has so much content. Also, your virtual upline is another great one. So if you're just filling your brain with these act, these ideas, these activities. Um, over and over again, it gives you the inspiration and the motivation to do the activities when you're filling your mind with positivity and personal development. Um, I've found that has been one of the biggest changes for me in terms of 
my positivity, my productivity, my success in this business over this last year. I've had an amazing year and it was, is a lot of it is personal development. So I'm going to get going since it's getting long, but I really hope to see several of you in the business activity tracker, tracker challenge and commit to doing this and have a great Monday.